I have a second channel, Cube Compium DDX. Hey everybody, so here we have the original Cube Computer TV Box Slim. This is a little computer that was built into a former DirecTV set-top box. It has a uh, mini ITX motherboard pulled from an HP desktop tower. Um, it has the AMD E300 APU, which is not exactly all that powerful. <laughs> Let's just say that. The E-Series APUs, especially the older ones, they weren't all that uh, spectacular performance-wise. We have, I believe, 4 gigs of DDR3 memory in this thing. We have a, a SATA SSD, 64 gigabytes. It's a little Transcend drive. We're going to attempt to install Windows 11 on this thing and see how it runs. So, that being said, I actually have to use a uh, keyboard, a separate keyboard, um, to get started with this thing because for some reason this motherboard does not detect the keyboard that's on my uh, USB to PS2 adapter. It's one of those um, special few motherboards with a crappy BIOS. I'll just say, I'll just say it like that. Um, so, and pop in her. USB stick that has Windows 11 on it. And let's go ahead and give it a shot. Alright. That way I can go in here and select our proper boot device so this motherboard actually um, does seem to support UEFI now um, this flash drive is actually I think set up as MBR so let me try my uh, UEFI one and see if that makes any difference Alright, so we're going to try, actually try to set this up uh, using the FI. Um, <clears throat> so I'm just going to press enter on that. I think I tried something like this one time in the past and it was kind of buggy. I think it was a Windows 10, but we'll try it Windows 11 and see what happens. Otherwise, I can set it up via um, MBR. Yes, guys, Windows 11, you can actually install it via MBR. It's just on the regular install, they have it uh, more or less due to the uh, elite class requirements that Microsoft requires for the OS. Um, normally, you wouldn't be able to install it on a uh, MBR based computer, but when you uh, download the ISO from Microsoft and you write it to a, a USB stick using Rufus, um, you can, in fact, have it bypass the checks for TPM and all that good stuff. Now, there's a chance you may actually be able to, be able to install this um, using a standard um, Windows 11 USB. I'm not as certain on that, but you see we're loading up now. So this is a, uh, I should mention this motherboard, it's from either 2010 or 2011, sometime like that. It was before, it was before Windows 8. The computer it came from originally had Windows 7 loaded on it. I'm going to select next, select install now. I'm going to choose on a product key. 
this machine actually does have a uh, Windows 10 Pro uh, digital license, so we're going to choose Windows 11 Pro 64 bit. Agree to the terms. It's like custom. So we need to go ahead and actually wipe these partitions that are on the uh, SSD. I do have other experiments in the plans for this machine. So it's going to wipe it. And I do actually have a backup of it. Select new and apply. Now, one thing that's going to be interesting is this is a 64 gigabyte um, SSD, but of course, um, in Windows, it's going to report as um, 59.5 gigabytes. So we'll have to see how the PC Health Check app um, rates that, because Windows 11. As part of the uh, elite class requirements, require a 64 gigabyte um, storage drive or boot drive as a minimum. So let's go ahead and proceed with installation. Now I'm trying to remember. Um, I think last time I tried to do this with Windows 10, there was a bug somewhere. Maybe, maybe the motherboard would not pick up. Um, the OS when it tries to boot with UEFI, not 100% certain on that, but we'll, I guess we'll find out. So we'll let this run and do its thing. Well, guys, I guess I spoke a little too soon. Um, as soon as I stopped the video, I noticed the mouse cursor is frozen. You can't do anything with it. Totally frozen. So um, we're going to have to try using uh, the MBR setup. I knew there was something with this little machine. I can't I just couldn't remember what it was. There was something there was something going on with it, for sure. I'm gonna go have to do a hard reset on it because it's I say it's locked up solid. I can't say the early, some of these early UEFI based motherboards are just really finicky. I'm going to actually have to pull power from this thing. It's literally that locked up. <laughs> like the power LED is lit, but the fans are not even running. So, got to actually unplug it completely. Plug it back in. And now it should start up. Alright, so we're going to do a legacy um, boot this time. Okay, so same as before, but this time I'm going to go ahead and use this part to wipe the disk. Okay, so we've wiped it. Let's proceed through the installation setup here. Does this mean is it running faster this time? It seems like it's going a lot faster than it was last time. You can hear me talking. I'm not actually speeding up this section of the video. Accept the terms. 
so here's our SSD. Let's do new and apply. Yeah, for sure, it does seem like uh, the UEF file on this board is definitely buggy. So I'm going to select next and we'll go ahead and let this install. And as you can see, the mouse cursor is not frozen. And I see activity on the uh, disk activity LED. So we are now installing. Okay, so we're finally in. Let's go ahead and run through setup here. Okay, so we're in now. Uh, it's still, of course, loading the desktop. Uh, taskbar isn't there yet, but you can see this processor is uh, pretty much maxed out, as I figured it would be. A little 1.3 gigahertz AMD E300 APU. <laughs> so we'll go let this run for a little bit and get settled in, and. Uh, let it install drivers and all that good stuff, and we'll go from there. Okay, everybody, so I've given it some time to install updates and all that good stuff, so let's go ahead and give it a spin here. Let's go ahead and start it up. Okay, <clears throat> so here we are on a desktop, and of course, um, in Windows 11, you got to do Control Delete just to get the Task Manager. So we can see. <laughs> That CPU performance, I mean, it's just wide open. AMD E300 APU, 1.3 gigahertz. So let me go ahead and fetch uh, CPU Z, that way we can look at the specs on this thing. Okay, so there's our specs. Um, again, AMD E300 Zakati. We have uh, a total of one meg of L2 cache on this. So 1.3 gigahertz. I do believe, guys, this is technically a mobile processor. Um, you see these in uh, budget laptops pretty often, but um, 
there were a select handful of computers, including some from HP, that uh, had this little processor soldered on to a uh, mini ITX motherboard. This is um, BJ. This, this is a BJ um, chip. There's a motherboard, it's a Pegatron, OEM for HP. We got four gigs of DDR3. We're running it. Let's see, a dual channel, I do believe. Well, it doesn't, it doesn't say there, so maybe not. So, yeah, let's go and uh, do a little tour here. So, I'll say this. Um, of course, once everything settles down, it's not it's it's not terrible. It's still doing some installation stuff in the background. I do see. So one thing I'm gonna go ahead and do is go into. Uh, Personalization internal and dark mode. I much prefer that over the uh, light mode. Here we are. <laughs> and have a look at this. Look at the Look at the drag. It can't quite keep up. The, at least the uh, graphics. Let's see if uh, see if we had the proper driver installed. I think we do. I mean, we did just get that Catalyst Control Center pop up there, but uh, yeah. So even the GPU on this thing is uh, not super powerful. It's the Radeon HD 6310 graphics. So, like I mentioned, not super powerful. Now that does okay, but huh, you can see though, uh, the graphics aren't exactly smooth. And of course, I got all the uh, got all the pre-included bloat. There's Solitaire, which I believe is Microsoft Solitaire Collection. Not sure what went on this went on there. And we can see again that CPU pegged out. And oh yeah. Um let's not forget to go fetch the uh PC health check installer. So that way I can install that and show you just how incompatible this thing is with the uh, Microsoft Elite class requirements for Windows 11. So um, this app is really intended for uh, Windows 10. So it never did it never did launch uh, solitaire did it uh let's try again so I'll click solitaire uh we'll see what happens this time p c health check is uh launching. It says it's installing an update. Like, dang, why can't we get our solitaire up? That's kind of weird. Let's see what all we have here. 
There's the solitaire collection. We'll try that one here in a moment. It's funny how for several, at least a couple of Windows 10 builds, they were always talking about Snippin' Tool was going to be retired and replaced with Snippin' Sketch, but we can see in Windows 11 that they're both there side by side. So the PC Health Check this installed. Let's try the Solitaire Collection shortcut. And you can see this thing is running at say at a crawl. Not as bad as that Simpron 3600 Plus I did in the last video. <laughs> so here's the PC Health Check. It says we do have a 64 gigabyte solid state drive, so it's not going off of it's not going off the partition size of 58.9 gigabytes. So let's check and see if this computer running Windows 11 is compatible with Windows 11. Look at all this. The PC must support Secure Boot. TP on 2.0 must be supported enabling this PC. The processor isn't currently supported for Windows 11. There is, however, at least 4 GB of system memory. The system disk is 64 GB or larger. The processor has two more cores. So we get a we get like two more check marks on this machine than we did on the uh, previous one, but of course. Got the red X and got all these here. So this computer that does not meet the elite class requirements for Windows 11 is running Windows 11. Not running it the best, but it's running it. Um, to, really, to be honest, Windows 10 runs um, very similarly, and somewhere it's picking up this that, that this is an HP computer. Uh, the motherboard, as I've mentioned, was originally from an HP. Let's see here. See if we can get a uh, look at yep Hewlett Packard system manufacturer CQ 2014. That's what this originally came from. This motherboard Windows 11 Pro. This is 21H2, by the way. So I'm going to say that the Microsoft Solitaire Collection is simply incompatible with this thing because we tried to launch it like, I mean, four or five times and it just does not want to launch. Really weird. So, um, just to put in perspective, uh, this TV box system with Windows 10, um, it struggles to play anything over 720p video on YouTube, which is kind of a bummer since, uh, well, I mean, it would be nice if it could play uh, full HD. I am, however, going to use this little computer for an experiment here soon. I'm thinking about downloading uh, Android TV x86 and trying to install that. See if, uh, see if it'll work. So yeah, uh, I don't think there's really too much more to see here. I mean, it's running it. <laughs> it ain't running it super fast, but it's just another example of, uh, those, again, these requirements here being what many in the tech enthusiast, um, community consider, um, artificially high in my opinion it's going in here in a few years uh, when when this 10 support ends um, it's going to help contribute to um, a lot of e-waste when perfectly decent computers will be getting retired and disposed of because they don't meet Microsoft's elite class requirements for Windows 11 and those requirements again for like the CPU um, have to be 8th gen 
um, or later Intel Core series or Ryzen 2000 or later. So there's a lot of computers that, like for example, 7th gen um, Intel Core or Ryzen 1000 series. I mean, those computers, I mean, they can run it just fine. Heck, this computer I have on the floor down here, it's a uh, uh, AMD A66420K APU. Uh, runs Windows 11 just fine. So, that being said, um, let's go and do a restart. And although this is running a bit sluggish and a couple of things, like for example the Microsoft Solitaire collection doesn't want to load, this is actually running um, Windows 11 a little better than I thought, and of course it's going to do stupid updates. In typical modern Windows fashion, this install updates whenever. Okay, this thing is still doing updates, so I think we'll go ahead and call it because I do have other things I'd like to do with this computer. Um, like I mentioned, the uh, testing out with Android X86, uh, excuse me, Android TV X86, see uh, how that runs on here. Um, and if that works well, I'll definitely be posting a video. So <laughs> it says, please leave your computer on. Well, I'm sorry, but we're going to unplug it. We're going to unplug it right now. Take that, Windows 11. So, anyways, hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Well, everybody, that wraps up for this video, and I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please like the video. Also, don't forget to subscribe to your channel, and be sure to tick that bell so you'll get notified when new videos are posted. Also, don't forget, I have a whole lot of other interesting videos here on the channel to check out. And also, in addition, I have a second channel, CubeComp MTDX, where I have all sorts of other videos not exactly related to technology. Links to the channels are available at the end of this video. Again, I thank you for your support, and thanks for watching this video.